Welcome back, City Builders. Kodiak the Kodiak here. In today's video, we're going to be going over Colossal Order's Word of the Week number 12, as well as go over two big mod updates, one of which will change the way we see City Skylines 2, and the other will change the way how we play it. Now, before we get started, about 70% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed, so if you guys wouldn't mind dropping a subscription, it means a ton. So before we get started, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all the City Skylines 2 news, tips, and tricks. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, now before we get started this week, I want to spend a little bit more time working on some other videos on the channel so you guys might see one this week or maybe even next week as I work on some more. Honestly, like a lot of you and a lot of other content creators, I'm kind of just taking a little step back from playing City Skylines 2, so I'm just not actively playing the game. There's not really any new updates coming out for the game and I can actively track the mods one by one as they come out. Not really like abnormal for me. I did this a lot with City Skylines 1. While I have like well over a thousand hours in the first game, I have been playing it since launch and there are some people who have way more hours than me and I was honestly blown away to see when I jumped into the City Skylines space and kind of became intermingled with a lot of other people people how many people just play city skylines i've always been somebody who jumps around from game to game and i've been doing that over my twitch stream which if you guys want to come watch you guys can always do that but we've been taking a look at steam next fest games and just trying out a bunch of other stuff over there on the channel while i'm in a little bit of a city's lull personally which again is not really abnormal for me but i think it just coincides with a lot of other people as well who are also in a bit of a city's lull but what's not in that city's lull is our weekly recaps and let's dive into Colossal Order's Word of the Week number 12. So I go through and highlight everything in the Word of the Week that I think is important ahead of time so we can just read through the important bits and let's start off with this big paragraph up here at the top. While the tech team is hard at work implementing the code modding support, we can focus on the economy in City Skylines 2 in today's Word of the Week. At release, the economy did not meet the quality standards we strive for and I apologize for the frustration that this has caused. In the post-release patches, we have included fixes for issues present in the economy's implementation, but some remain and we're working on resolving those thanks to your reports. The fixes will focus on the underlying systems as well as how inf information is presented in the game to achieve more clarity that helps you understand the economy better um you know they've done a lot to the statistics panel in the past weeks if you guys haven't taken a look at your statistics panel since the last patch they did actually do a lot to fix those uh basically graphs so you can kind of understand better what's going on in your city and they did rearrange it a bit better and going back up to the top of this where they're talking about while well, the tech team is hard at work implementing code modding support um just know that this next patch when they drop code modding might not fix every single economy simulation. Now, while we're not gonna get a patch for a while, as they've said two weeks ago, that the next patch will drop with code mod support. It's also really important to understand that we might not see too many changes in terms of the actual gameplay balancing and fixes because most of the team is hard at work working on code modding support and trying to rush that out as quickly as possible. So while most of the team is busy working on that, they can't also be working on a lot of the patches and fixes. And this is why we've seen this weird balancing act from Colossal Order where they need to pick and choose what they're allocating resources for. And they've now chosen code modding to be like the 100% priority, which I think is the right decision. I think it's the right decision to just get modding in a place that's actually accessible to people. So that way people can make City Skylines 2, much like they did with City Skylines 1, the game they want to play because everybody plays it differently. So then they go on to talk about uh, the word of the week, much like last week, they kind of answer some questions that they can't just answer in like Twitter comments or Instagram comments or anything like that, that people have asked about the game. So that's what they've been going through here. Some of them are kind of, I don't know, I feel like we know this, or maybe it's just I know this because I am so ingrained in the news of City Skylines too, that there's some things in this that like, I'm just like, yeah, I know this already. You've talked about it a million times in videos and words of the week, but not everybody is is as in tune as I am with a lot of this stuff. So I guess it's really important to get this information out there in like easy bite sized readable chunks, but I'm not gonna go through some of the stuff where I'm like, I feel like most people know this, right? So uh, first off, the first question here is what is the impact of specialized industries on in the local economy? I feel like they've explained this quite a bit, but there is an important bit here at the end where the design team will look at how to make it more clear which companies are importing or exporting and how you can affect that. I think that's really important just so we can kind of understand like which areas of the economy are more being impacted by these resource demands than just the actual statistics panel. Like actually being able to click on the buildings and see it uh, more actively would be really, really good. 
The next question they had was, why are some services free to import while others have a fee? They've explained this a bunch, so I'm just going to skip over that one because I don't really feel like it's that important to go over again. Um, how is profitability determined? Uh, so we're going to skip the first sentence here, but we're going to go to the profitability indicates the possibility for positive income and varies between zero and 255. I thought that was interesting that they actually shared like the actual like values here. I feel like they've done that before, but I forgot until I kind of read through this. I was like, oh yeah, they did it. Like they do it on like a, a set scale. So I thought that was interesting. And then they said when there is no income for the company and it still needs to pay a lot of expenses, the profitability can become zero. But it doesn't mean that the company doesn't have any money because the companies are saving money, but rather predicts the value of revenue loss of money. Issues like the lack of employees and the lack of input or output resources can cause profitability to fluctuate. So uh, basically what they're trying to say is like, obviously there's a lot of factors that go into profitability, but at the end of the day, just because a business isn't profitable right now, doesn't mean that they're going to go under immediately. It just means that they're going to start digging into whatever savings that the company has in terms of profitability that they were maybe saving to upgrade the business because that's how it works. So you use your savings to then in turn upgrade said uh, business that you have, or even the residents when they pay rent, they put a pooled savings in to upgrade the building. What does the monthly balance show? And then um, I kind of just skipped over that because I feel like it's really self-explanatory if you just click on it, but the city economy has been affected by bugs that cause ex uh, cause the expected income or loss to not match the actual monthly income in the city, which is something I think we've all seen at this point. And we're working to resolve the remaining issues with industrial tax, reaching high values for no apparent reason. And it's not like we're not going to get maybe some of these changes in the next patch but again they're just not the priority right now when code modding support is and that's what the team's entire focus is on so as we scroll down a bit more i skipped this question and then we go to the last paragraph here where they said we've also received questions about land value so we want to share a quick update about the current state of both the land value and demand systems as both will have changes and fixes included in the next patch of the game which they were in the previous patch as well the demand system will be improved to make it easier to understand. Fixing major systems like land value takes a bit more time than usual bug fixes because these elements are connected to other parts of the game's economy systems. So they're a little bit more complex. I think a lot of people have demanded or asked or like questioned why certain things haven't been fixed. But when working in systems like this, when you pull a string that you think will actually like come out of its thread, it might be wrapped up in another string and another string and another string, and you've created a larger problem by trying to fix one problem. So you might have fixed that one problem, but created three more in the process, and that takes time. So they might be leaving some of these issues in because they're interconnected to a larger problem that isn't currently an issue with this smaller problem existing. I hope that makes sense for some of you and like why certain things haven't been fixed. So like postal system for me, like my sorting facilities are still omega bonked. Like they still really don't work, especially the sorting facilities. Um, the postal systems still work, but my sorting facilities still don't. And it's been like that for a long time. And my assumption is that there's a larger issue under that sorting system that takes a lot more time to work on because they've definitely addressed it. They know that it's an issue. It's just most likely that that issue is a deeper issue that caused a ton of other stuff or is linked to something else that they don't have time to fix, which I would rather they put out code mod support to be quite frank with you. So anyways, that's the word of the week this week. Let's dive into those mod updates. So before we dive into those mod updates, I would like to point out some maps that have come out in the past week. I want to start here with Bloomington Midwest uh, map, which is a Midwest themed map that actually is a kind of recreation or maybe it's a height map import. I'm not too sure of Ottawa, Illinois. They don't say it in the description, but I I found the location. It's Ottawa, Illinois. So it's, it's a height map recreation of that place in Illinois, which is in the Midwest. Uh, it's a pretty solid map. It's really flat, but if this is, I don't know, something that interests you, I definitely would consider checking it out. I thought it was a really cool map. And the way they detailed uh, in terms of the trees, the actual landscaping around the river, it just felt, it felt realistic. Like if you took all of the areas that don't have trees and put farm fields or a town in them, like that just, that feels like the Midwest to me. That feels like the place I grew up in, you know? So uh, I liked that. I thought it was pretty cool. If we scroll up a little bit further, we have a Vancouver, Canada height map. I think the terrain is a little, I guess, aggressive because it, Vancouver is actually like quite hilly as far as I understand it. So uh, it is really cool though. I definitely consider checking it out. We also have up here wilderness map, which has some interesting landscaping that I'm not sure if I'm really a super big fan of, but I think it like leans itself really in to being a pretty solid challenge map. 
map in terms of like there's this narrow narrow alley that you have to kind of wedge most of your buildings in as well as the coastline and i just i don't know i thought i thought it was uh it was definitely like interesting to me i thought it was worth maybe checking out if that's something that interests you there is another geo city for anybody looking for that modern uh futuristic feel to their cities there's another geo cities map uh if this is anything like the other ones if you download this this is actually going to be a save file not a map so keep that in mind and then there's also hoiston isles which is a bit more of a flatter map a jacksonville man made it here and you can actually get like an actual image of it which is great not a lot of um maps include images of them in the thunderstorm description so i'm really appreciative that they did this but uh pretty flat maps but it feels like a vanilla-esque map in a way right like it's got like a little bit of terrain elevation changes it's islands it's an archipelago of some sort um it's relatively flat but has a little bit of character to it it just feels like a like a nicer vanilla map is like the best way i can describe it and i, I thought it was pretty nice so i figured i would throw that out there so with, now that we're done with that let's actually go in and dive into some of these new mods now there's really not a lot of new mods so we're gonna go up here to the last updated and go through the mod update because there was some bigger updates to some of the mods and one of them was tree controller if you guys are ever looking to know what happened with some of these mod updates some of the mod creators if we actually go in here to tree controller we can go up here to the change log you can actually read some of the things that these mod creators have actually done in order to i don't know update their mod so update v1.1.0 is the first update that we're going to talk about here which came out about a week ago from when i'm recording this right now while brushing and changing types you can select multiple types of trees to make custom sets so you can now make custom sets of tree brushes which i can go in and show you guys how to do here after we read through this you can save custom sets to five buttons that you can use or override later which is super sick so we have like customizable brush sets that we can set much like the uh forestry brush mod from city skylines one tool tips thanks to algernon everything in the vegetation tab is now included in the type changing and random rotation which is really cool um which includes brushes or uh, bushes and things like that random rotation toggle now gets saved increased randomness when choosing what type to use within a set various ui and other bug fixes and foliage color data folder for custom season colors has moved to a new permanent location within the mod so if you're using the custom colors section of tree controller to make brighter autumn colors or if you're doing like some kind of like weird space theme you can obviously do something with that in here so then they also released two patches, which fixed some issues with the mods. If you were uh, noticing some issues with it, uh, those should be fixed. And then some for improved collaborations with Line Tool Lite. So without further ado, let's dive in and actually look at some of these changes. Okay, so here we are in the Lost Valley map. This is a very like European forest build map that uh, was uploaded onto Thunderstore. I think I might have left it out of my map video. I really like this map though. It is definitely more challenging than uh, most of the maps that are are available on Thunderstore and the map creator talked about that as well in the description of the mod this is meant to be a very organic map as you can see here it is incredibly hilly and something that is meant to be a real organic build with maybe not a lot of structures on it now that being said I wanted to use this map to highlight the other mod that we're going to talk about in a little bit but first let's dive into tree controller so if we go into our landscaping tab which we're already in we go over to vegetation and then you go down here to the place multiple button you'll notice that things have slightly changed so first off we now have access to a bunch of buttons up here at the top and these are our custom sets so they even explain how to use the mod so what we can do is custom set one we can click custom set two custom set three they already have some pre-made sets for us so let's go to custom set five because there's only one tree in it so we can hold control to select or unselect multiple items of trees using the toolbar then hold control and click this button to save the custom set once the set has been saved click the button to select that set hold control while switching themes to maintain the custom set so here's what we do all we need to do is go over here and hold control and we'd allow us to select multiple trees right but if we don't hold control it'll just select that one tree and we'll lose access to the set and because i didn't hit save we lost it so let's say we want um let's say we want some chestnuts here we want some alders we want some pines some spruces and some popples actually we don't want popples we want wildflower bushes so that way we can show off that it's using bushes as well i'm going to increase the brush strength so it's nice and dense here as well and i just realized that i untoggled it okay gosh this is gonna take a minute to, for me to get used to so we're gonna do spruce pine alder 
and then uh, Wild Bush. That's what we're gonna do with Chestnuts. Okay, so as you can see, as I move this around, you'll notice that I actually are, you can already see them. So we're gonna go over here and hold Control and save our custom set. So now we have a custom set here and we can actually paint the brush down. And as you can see, it's only painting down everything that I wanted, but it's also allowing us to paint down bushes as well, which is not something we really were able to do before with the tree controller mod or any system in the game. We weren't able to paint down bushes alongside trees. So as you can see, we can now paint down a whole forest of trees. Now, obviously they're all set as adult. So if we want to change the age of the tree, we can just do that on the fly. And uh, here we go. So now we can go through and paint a bunch of different ages of the trees. And now we have a full forest with the actual selection of trees that we wanted to have in the forest. Now, an important thing to uh, learn about this is that, so obviously we had that brush before, but if you notice now when I click on it, we actually only have London Plain and Lindens. But if you're paying close enough attention, you'll know that those brushes aren't in the European tree set that we were using before because we were using alders and alders are only found in the European tree set. So do keep in mind that these custom sets are like they'll still actually select the theme so it's not uh five sets for the north american theme and five sets for the european theme but it will actively switch to the theme that those trees are found in as well and i believe they're theme dependent so you can't put alders with some north american exclusive trees so what's a north american exclusive through the hickory i don't believe that we can include hickory with the set let's give it a shot but i don't think that we can include it together so if we select the hickory here and we go over to the european theme and we select alder and we go back over to north america well maybe we can and let's save the set okay we've saved the set now let's see if we can do this um where can we is there an open spot right here boom and look at that oh my goodness wait we actually can so we have alders and hickories these are both exclusive to their their themes right here and we can have them in our uh sets that's really cool i did not expect it to allow us to pick between themes but there we go now we can select uh basically our own custom sets we can make our own custom brushes now super cool really excited yed yang's constantly popping off with uh their mods and this is no exception realistic density also received some balancing changes this past week uh i just figured it would probably be important to bring that up i don't use realistic density mod but i know quite a few of you guys do so there was a uh some changes to that mod so take a look at that in the actual change log in the uh just like we did with uh tree controller in realistic density Fine Stuff also received some updates as well. I'm not gonna go fully into that. If you guys wanna learn what Fine Stuff is, uh, most of them were quality of life changes. Uh, nothing super big, if I remember correctly. There were some things disabled, some things. This mod's really actively changing and I don't really feel like spending much time in a video to talk about it when they're probably gonna change it. Um, it's a really cool mod. If you guys wanna learn about it, click up in the annotations right now to last week's weekly recap where we talked all about Fine Stuff mod which also includes a picker mod. And I did actually hear from the creators of Find Stuff mod. Last week at the end of it, I talked about, man, I really wish that the pick stuff part of this mod worked with networks. You couldn't use it to use networks. And that's kind of how I used a lot of my building in City Skylines 1 was with the picker mod and picking networks and then rebuilding it. And it does seem like they have added that, which is super cool. So now you can use the actual picker part of it to uh, select networks is now not just buildings. So anyways, if we scroll down though, there has been an update to Map Texture Replacer. And this is a big one, absolutely massive update to Map Texture Replacer. There is now also two extra mods that come with it. Uh, before, if you were using Map Texture Replacer, you'd probably know that it includes the Desert Map theme. That is now a separate file. You have to actually go onto Thunderstore and download the Desert Map theme. But there is also the Home of Chameleon Map theme, which is a custom map texture pack made by Chameleon TBN for the Map Texture Replacer mod. And this pack is so good. It is so good, guys. Let's dive in and take a look at it. Okay, so here we are back in a Lost Valley, and I want to show you guys off the map texture replacer. I've shown it off before, I believe, in my top 15 mods video, which is pretty out of date at this point, just because the modding scene changes so quickly. But all you have to do once you download it is select the backpack up here for hook UI and go down here to the map texture replacer. And if you haven't taken a look at map texture replacer recently, you'll notice that things have changed quite a bit. So you can do the base pack up here at the top and now there's a drop down carrot. So the drop down carrot allows you to uh, basically open that up and you can select 
different options for each one. So instead of clicking it and then taking to a file and you have to load it to the file specifically, you can still do that by clicking load image down below. But now if you've downloaded one of the packs, so like we downloaded Home of Chameleon and the Desert Map theme, you can just select them independently. And there's some nice sliders down here as well. So let's switch this map over to the desert theme and take a look at what that does. So that's gonna load up the desert theme of the map and here you go. Now you can see the desert map theme here on the map. So if you wanted to make a desert themed map, you can actually do that using map texture replacer. Obviously a lot of the assets might not work super well with it, but if you're looking to make maybe a Vegas style city, you could totally do that right now just with this mod alone. And if we wanted to now take a look at Home of Chameleon, which is the reason why I wanted to actually do this on Lost Valley because I felt like Lost Valley was kind of this hilly alps s kind of map or it's the closest thing we've kind of had to that at this point and if you actually load this up oh gosh I just I love what Chameleon did with the actual uh, ground dirt textures as well as the cliff textures if we go over here now obviously with the tiling there's a lot of repeating textures but that's the really cool thing about this mod is that we can actually change how the tiling works for stone and now it doesn't look as bad because we've increased the texture size and I think that looks a lot nicer also if we go in here it changed the color of the stone so let's actually switch it back to default so you guys can see what that looks like in comparison so this is Chameleon's uh, texture pack here and and if we switch it back to default, you notice it's a lot sandier, it's a lot more yellow. And if we switch it back to Home of Chameleon here, you'll notice that the first off, the grass is a little bit brighter, and all of the stone and dirt is all a bit more gray, which I feel like fits with the uh, type of geography that you find maybe in more mountainous environments or like in the Alps or the Rockies, for example. Now, obviously, there's still some sandy stuff in the Rockies, but this just feels a bit more like the mountainous theme that I want when I'm building my cities. Something I like to do is actually change the grass grass back to the normal color. I like the muted grass color. I think that Chameleon's uh, color is a little bright for my taste personally, but I still obviously really like it. I, I, and I really like the dirt diffuse and the cliff uh, or the, the dirt normal and dirt diffuse and then cliff diffuse and cliff normal of Chameleon set. I think this is uh, exactly how I'm going to play all of my saves from here on out. I look at, I just, oh gosh, I love the, the rock texture and the dirt texture so much more. Uh, hit a little autosave there than the base game textures. So give this mod, uh, mod a shot if you haven't already. And if you have already, definitely take a look at Home of Chameleon's texture pack. And you know, you guys can make your own texture packs too as well. So all you have to do is go in here and load image and it is found in your Beep and X plugins and then the game world map te uh, map texture replacer and you can just load the texture from in here. So you just place whatever your texture you want in here. Um, I believe it says in the mods description how to do that. And if you don't still know how to do that, you guys can go over to the city's modding discord, which I'll leave a link to down in the description and actually just ask how to do it. And somebody will definitely help you. Uh, figure out how to do that because all you have to do is go to a website that has textures available to you so these can be free textures that you can find online and you can pick and change however you want your city to look and you can experiment around as long as you have access to those free textures so if somebody has a website that maybe contains a bunch of free textures so we can truly start making the game look the way that we want it please let me know down in the comments and I might even pin the comment so that way everybody can find it and have access to it okay and that's all from me for this week I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys get some use out of those new mod updates that have come out. If you guys are taking a break from City Skylines 2, let me know down in the comments what games you guys are playing that aren't City Skylines. So if it's not City Skylines 1, what are you playing in replace of City Skylines 2 right now? It also just lets me know that you guys made it to the end of the video, which is super cool. Anyways, I'll let you guys get on with your day. I've been Kodiak Kodiak, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.